Welcome back to the crossover. So, we have completed our first trial, but Espella will be spending a bit of time away from the camera as, well, she has been imprisoned again. Well, never, well, never mind that, my window's still not fixed. Professor, we're stuck in a book. I think that's the least of our worries right now. You've been away yeah, from your house for about a week. But, but, like, but what could, but what could us going back home if right, I haven't got a bloody on, window? Hold on, hold on. Shiro, what are you talking about? He does oh, that hello. kind of thing all the time. <laughs> What is this abomination? It's a dog. Whoa! He's one very frisky creepy, little but... puppy. And he has uh, and he has Nishihura style eyes. The dots. He's a cute little guy, huh? You're just begging to be petted, aren't you? Don't, don't, don't yell at him, Maya. Jesus. Good boy. Good little doggy. And then it bites her. Uh, yeah, attack. <laughs> Oh no, it's wagging its tail. <laughs> See? Look, Nick. He's so happy. He's showing his teeth like he's smiling. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not so sure dogs show their teeth when they're happy. The thing is, the sprite shows the opposite emotion. <laughs> I know, right? Don't be such a spoil spot. Come on, try petting him. Wait, why are you asking him to do it? Because that's what Maya does, Twips. Ah, <laughs> uh, alright. Let me give this a shot. Come on, ear boy. M Mr. Wright! Don't! Don't pet him! It's a trap! No! No, no, Felix, no! Uh... Uh... Huh? He'll steal your badge! <laughs> oh! And Phoenix died. <laughs> da, 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 da. Everyone da. hates Phoenix, even well, dogs. Well, you know, Phoenix, you need to look at the positive. At least he did not pee on your leg. I guess Professor. even cute little puppies have a bite worse than their bark. Professor, we're Maya. feeding. Uh... Ma Maya, are you familiar with dogs at all? Also, I'm Professor, wake up. Here. Wake up, Professor. Wake up. Even in 3D, you can all escape this. Uh, <laughs> uh, are you alright, Mr. Wright? Oh, thanks no, for officer, asking. No, Officer, I swear. No, Officer, I swear. I tried to warn you. The scene wasn't about him, so he zoned out. <laughs> Check who directed the Leighton parts. Let me see. Hmm. Professor Leighton? I oh, guess you can't nice. always judge a dog by its uh, looks. Dwebs, you do the dog while I'm... He may look cute, but what he was saying wasn't cute at all. But what do you mean, what he was saying, Luke? Is he racist or something? Oh, yeah, we haven't told you about that. Basically, oh, yeah. he can talk to animals. Yeah. That's right, Miss Faye. Luke can understand what animals are saying. Although, judging from how he said it, I don't think the dog is very, um, pleasant. It was so very... you know dog swears, Luke. <laughs> wow, that's amazing! Hey, Maya, isn't there also that amazing thing that you can do, too? Phoenix, stop bringing it up! Um, I have <laughs> multiple uh, stomachs for burgers. Is that the thing you're talking about? I meant the actual... F okay, the other supernatural thing about you. Um, I don't know what that could be. Given the certain circumstances, I'm not sure that's a good thing. Oh god, you really did swear. I wish I could talk to animals. I'd love to talk to a puppy, or even a spell's cat Eve. Oh. That puppy's way of talking reminded me a lot of Inquisitor Barnum. Uh, okay, okay, okay. The whole racism thing's got out the window now. He said something like, I'll only say this once, Sir Blue Knight. I, Constantine, do not permit you to stroke me. Uh... Huh. Or words to that effect. You know, if he was talking about... So lost um, the translation. Yeah. Hmm. So the dog's name is Constantine, huh? Obviously he Please, is a but... DC superhero. But he, doesn't, but he doesn't look like Keanu Reeves. Hmm. Perhaps I could have been Inquisitor Barnum's dog. God, that movie also, was terrible. That, 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 that's cute to draw, but John Constantine a hero. Okay. I have some interesting history on the development team right, right that I just found here. When I was searching oh. the director. Maybe okay, he's uh, going to meet his master. Go on, Pedro. 
Okay, so Atsushi Kano from level 5, who directed the latent half of this game, along with Takumi directing the S attorney aspects, um... Before he worked at, he only did two, uh, a couple things at level 5, specifically directing the Zoom of Strikers for the Wii, directed Fantasy Life, and this game, and that's about it. Before huh. this, he was, a he was a nighttime level designer at Sonic Unleashed, a chief game designer in Sonic 06, a game designer in Billy Hatcher, and a battle enemy character designer in Fantasy Star Online Episode 1 and 2. Uh, so huh. they so worked for Sega. So the Sonic game everyone hates, and the half of Sonic Unleashed everyone hates. And, and, and this part, and he's part of a special thanks section of Sonic Heroes. Huh. Yeah. Maybe he's just better at making these kinds of games. And so he was at Sega for quite some time then. So mm -hmm. the reason I was asking is because uh, why would he have late and be, be his, have his eyes closed in that bit? Why again, the idea is that he's thinking about something, I guess. So, but again, it's not really conveyed for that moment. I mean, I later agree. does. Ha I mean, later does have a sad sprite where he tips his hat. To be fair, no, but, again, it's it's more of a case of he's thinking about pondering about the situation more than anything. Not, and to not, be not sprites, uh, not sprites. Sorry. Well, you we know what you mean. To no be fair, Tio brings up a good point. Not only that, but Layton has done that a lot in his previous games as well. My guess is that he was probably deep in thought at the time, but then was caught off guard by Phoenix yeah. getting attacked by that dog. It's one of those things where it, it feels like they forgot. Usually when he does that um, in the 2D games, he has uh, his hand, you know, in that the thinker statue type of pose. Uh, I guess they forgot to do that here. Oh, no, 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 um, no, 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 no. To be fair, even in the original games, they had him with just the eyes closed when he's deep in fucking. Well, Usually... again, it's more like the arms, but I do agree with Jova. Sometimes he just has these arms crossed, if I recall correctly, even in the True. original. When it comes to that, hat, when it comes to holding the hat down over his eyes, and that's usually when it's about of him being... I don't want to say distraught oh, because Layton doesn't often get yeah. uh, worried easily, but you know, sort of when he's puzzled or troubled by something. Special mention yeah. goes to when Rosetta Stone was hitting on him. I Not mean... just that. There was also that bit where, remember, when Angela and Herschel meet again for the first time in years, and, you know, when he's apologizing to her for letting uh, Randall die, he does the whole hat down thing as well in that one. So, go ahead, Dashi, what you were saying? I mean, we did literally just come out of court, and that was a lot, so maybe he was trying to think about the whole thing. That too, yeah. Because mm -hmm. this was at the very start of the conversation, so... Mm -hmm. Who put that there? It totally doesn't match the style of anything else in this town. We also need that, the, the, the source of that, nephew for that. Also, so. that trial went on all evening, and it's 1am, and I'm fucking tired. I'm pretty sure it's later than 1am. The letters it's on that signpost are so worn out by the elements, it's, it's almost impossible to read. It's so late, it's now early. This way goes to the courthouse, that one to the shopping district, but which way does that one go? So late Let's find out where that path leads some other time. Hmm. Yeah, not in the middle of the night. <laughs> possible stop, foreshadowing. Stop, stop reading mm. ahead of the script. <laughs> but that's what you're supposed to do, you're supposed to memorize your lines. Not that not, not oh, maybe, the professor, maybe the professor is like Christopher Walken, and he, he, yeah. can, he cannot... Uh... Hmm, did you see the leaves moving? That tree over there? Yes, I did! I wonder what it could be! Perhaps there's a bird up there! Bird? That's the only conclusion you can come up with? Um... Um, it's Batman or something. That would be cool. Good grief! Jesus Christ! Oh my God, she's alive! Actually, I mean, I guess she's Who a bird or something. Mary Poppins. What is that floating down? She's Mary Poppins, <laughs> y'all. Must say, this is a surprise. I didn't expect you to drop in like that. Thought you were literally How dead. else did you expect her to drop in? Sorry, <laughs> we thought she was dead after she ascended into the heavens. What were you doing up in that tree? <laughs> I can't tell you that. It's a major secret. Is that so? She was pretending to be Peach. Do you yeah, want to know okay. why? Um, no, no. it's okay. Well, I suppose I can tell you anyway. I was searching for wild flowers. No, really, it's fine. You don't need to tell us. You climbed up that tree to find flowers? You certainly are an active young lady. 
that's one way of putting it. I thought of a good way to appeal to the man of my dreams, you see. Ah, yes, I'm going to create a flower bouquet like the ones the fairies would make. Because dudes are into women who can fly into trees? Hey, don't think <laughs> Am I head over heels? I mean, how many people get to say, hey, my girlfriend can fly? True. Yes. <laughs> Puzzle 24. Pretty posy. A flower with very unique petals sits in the garden. However, it seems as if the petals are not correctly arranged. The flower pixie thinks they should be arranged so that each petal is next to the petal of either the same color or shape. Touch a petal once to pluck it and again to place it. Move the petals so that they can be arranged per the flower pixie's instructions. Uh. So since we're doing a puzzle now, I will take the time to mention something that I really do dig about this game for both the Layden and Ace Attorney aspects of it. Uh, what this game combines is the abundance that Layton games usually have of characters with the level of dexterity and specification that Ace Attorney characters get. What do I mean by this? Well, okay. Ace Attorney games are more character-driven, where Layton games are more story and world-driven. Now, Layton games tend to have more characters than Ace Attorney games do in their bouts here and there, at the sacrifice of not being able to focus on them as much because, well, more often than not, they're there to give you puzzles. This is not to say that Layton characters are not memorable. Oh, no, 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 they can still very much be, but there isn't always as much depth to them. Ace Attorney, on the other hand, has less characters, but in turn can focus on them a lot better and flesh them out more. Yeah. This game, I would say, is possibly some of the most in-depth we see of an Ace um, sorry, of a Layton slash Ace Attorney cast. More so with the yeah, Layton okay. cast, since this is normal for Ace Attorney. The cool thing is like, well, again, while not every character in this game gets, say, the same level of depth, one thing that is great about this world compared to a lot of other Layton games and is that you really do get to know the people of this town. You're not just constantly Definitely. moving on from section to section here and there. There are not only people you will run into that you help with puzzles, but some of these people are people you will run into during, before, and after courtroom sessions. And you see really much the effect that you do have on them as well here and there, which is something yeah. I really do love about Labyrinthia as a world. I will argue that uh, Curious Village did that well as well, because remember, in Curious Village, we're just stuck in one location, and we do meet plenty of the characters forgot enough, so it's not on the level of this game in Eisner Legacy and Layton's Mystery Journey, but I feel like the, the, the Curious Village did that a fairly good job at that as well. But yeah, that game had the advantage that it took place in just one single location like this one. I do wonder so. if Curious Village was definitely back when the series was taking more inspiration from Ace Attorney, given how... That was when it started off. Am I guess, that's sort of my guess as to why later games didn't really do it as much, if only because, well, Layton kind of blossomed off into its own direction. Oh, still with some inspiration from Ace Attorney, but it does feel like Curious Village definitely held more of the Ace Attorney inspirations than later games did in that regard. Oh, sure. Um, this is also something that uh, that's not going to was going to stop here because uh, in Asmund Legacy, I will argue Asmund Legacy also does a, a, a also does a good job uh, of making more memorable NPCs uh, thanks to the fact that you can visit them various times. Forgot, thanks to the world traveling mechanic. Professor, I did it. There we go. There we go. <clears throat> Beautiful! What a lovely arrangement of petals. The pixie seems very pleased. Oh, it's like, uh. Um, well. So it's like one of those Tinkerbell movies. <laughs> if I get him a bouquet, so just this, would he ever fall head over heels for me? You know, the ironic thing is that she ended up missing the trial. Because she was. Oh, I can't away. wait for the day when I can meet him again. You, you missed the opportunity. In fact, we probably get to know Barnum more than she ever will get to. That's... that's kind of sad. Sad. <laughs> oh, I'm just looking forward to the day when, when I next see Inquisitor Barnum and I don't with a bouquet. Why don't you just give him a ring while you're at it? Well, what's a ring? Oh, come on. Rings are very much still a thing here. I mean, okay, she I'm... needs a bouquet to hide the ring inside. Well, 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 Joe, I thought you meant like 
give him a ring like a white man talk, call him on the phone. Because that's a terminology mm. easy. Phoenix! Maya! Why are you back so late? We were at a trial? <laughs> oh, I don't think... Uh, did she know? Um, yeah. Sorry we're so late. It's just that, well, we were, they were, they were escorted out of the bakery while she was there, oh, so... Yeah, right, well, right. we, um... About a spell, uh... Yeah. <laughs> Why are you two looking so glum about? I was so surprised. Huh? Just how is it that you could do such a brilliant job as a defender? It was wonderful the way you proved the spell innocent. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Except Wait, so you knew where we were? Trial again. Why are you being such a bitch? Not at all. <laughs> no need to thank me. After all, the spell is still... I know, Phoenix. I know. Oh, you were watching the trial. I certainly was, Maya. There's no reason for you to look so glum. The way you stood up to the Inquisition, in all my life, I've never seen anything like it. It was almost like it was magic. That outstretched arm, that pointing finger, it was truly a sight to behold, Phoenix. It was very rude, you're grounded. Forever. Boss. Well, well, that's actually, why I'm not but, at all worried. Well, in this case, Joba, he said boss, so we should play the, the boss's theme from MGS3. Uh, because I believe in you, Phoenix. Oh. And I know you'll rescue a speller again. You know, the funny thing is that the same woman who plays boss also plays Pearl from SpongeBob. You will <laughs> rescue her, won't you? I will. I'll be there for her no matter what. Right to the very end. I am the Blue Knight of the Wind. <laughs> That's a promise now, you hear? Now then, you must both be tired after all you've been through. You must have the good rest. That means you two gentlemen as well. That's a good question. What time is it? It's like 4 a.m. or something? <laughs> good question, indeed. Oh, do you it's mean real, us? It's really, really late, too. Oh boy, 3 a.m. <laughs> it's it's like I said earlier, it's so late, it's now early. Yeah. Who has who has a bagel at 3 in the morning? <laughs> Actually, Professor, the correct term for something to be searching at this time will be a kebab. What? And everyone's like, what's a kebab? Those are gross, though. Sorry, Perhaps I'm I could bring out here, an right? extra large <laughs> loaf of bread for you. No, I mean, I'm fine, really, but thanks to the author. I might die if I get another loaf that size. Nick, we have, we have to give it all we've got for the boss's sake. Now I'm imagining an Ace Attorney and Metal Gear Solid crossover. Uh, not sure. Actually, actually I, I'm pretty sure Kojima would love to have a... Um... Uh, snake, uh, yeah, objection. And we've definitely that seen that Kojima's oh, an Ace Attorney fan. Objection! Oh, hell, uh, hell, have I thought be the prosecutor? Oh my <laughs> god. <Long> is gold. <laughs> I agree, Professor. Tomorrow's a new day, after all. Again, if you're putting that term, yes, but, you know, when you put it crossover oh like god. that, I, I have to expect also the other way around, as in Phoenix doing a cell cell section, and uh, no, it just doesn't hell. seem... I could see that working. <laughs> Jova, Teo, I got it. Uh, here's how we, here's how we would go. Uh, so Phoenix, sorry, sorry, Ma uh, Snake as the defen defender, and um, uh, Oswald as the prosecutor, right? And, the judge. Uh, 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 Colonel Campbell. Campbell, Campbell is the judge. Yes. But um, the colonel is the judge. Okay, and th so basically, here's how it goes. Here's how it goes. Uh, the objection, the objections are actually different words. Snake's like, like what? And also, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know it's. 
I mean, I know it's not official, but if we can make Isabel and Doom Guy a match made in heaven, we can do this too. Yes. That would be octopus over there. It looks belligerent. We need to spray the potential buyer with ink. They sell down most too. of the products today. Also, how? Also, I guess this mystical land has octopi in the lakes yeah, well, or I'm something. Yeah, well, question. Like again, we know that there's like a river nearby and everything, but octopi do not live there. They need salt water. Maybe there's an ocean somewhere where they can fish them from? Well then, let's all turn in for the night. Good night, everybody. Maybe someone's smuggling Good them in from scene. London. Mm. Oh, Maya. The Maya is sad theme. Ah, oh, is that you, Maya? Actually, I'm trying to remember, is this same a remix from a Leighton game? Yeah, I yes. think so. Yes. Yeah, I guess from um, the fourth game. Ah, oh, your yep, favorite last... soundtrack of the latest series. Yep. Yeah, it is, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an interesting thing. Like Dub just said earlier, like of all um, for this game, she would have decided to really pay a lot of fan service to fans of the fourth game. I'm guessing yeah. this yeah. ties back to how originally yeah. this game was supposed to take place during the, the prequels of Layton. We've even seen well, Luke was originally also... in that. We also, we also had a remix of the uh, Let's Take a Rest theme from Miracle Mask. True. After all, you were living here together. She must be like a member of the family. Yeah, that's a thing. We don't know how long these characters have been here, and as far as Phoenix and Maya do know, Espella to them is apparently like family. A bit of a blending of their memories that were real and memories that were fake. So, arguably, everyone does have It's also bizarre because, uh, it's also bizarre because, chronologically, Phoenix and Maya got sucked in the book after Lethal and Luke. Yeah, it does raise a few questions, but that's for later. Yeah. But those memories don't exact didn't exactly turn out to be real. And this is really good character writing. Fe Maya's essentially having an existential crisis about what is real or not. I've got no idea how I even had that kind of memory in the first place. Well, Joe, but this is exactly the kind of thing Shutakumi excels at anyway. <laughs> yes. On top of that, even the boss uh, seems to have the exact same memory as us. She's done so much to take care of us all. Let's think about it, Jobo. What, uh, like, you can probably cut on, 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 on one hand that the, the Ace Attorney characters that haven't had an existential crisis at some point in the <laughs> franchise. So. A poor Maya's had to deal with so many crises throughout her entire life. Sorry, Maya. Should the Kirby decide that you would be the running gag? Sorry. It's not your fault your, that your uh, have changed. You're his trauma dump. Congratulations. And even if the memories are different. I'm sure your feelings for Mrs. Eclair and Estella are real. Exactly. So you mean she read right, kind of like how he know trauma dumps on cats? <coughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Thanks, Luke. I I feel way better now. Looks like not well, at all. Not a cat. It's nothing. But this is a crossover, so um, unfortunately, he know Eve gets to live. Uh, remember, Shiroi, um, according to the behind the scenes stuff that me and Joe have looked into, Hino really wanted this game to feel like a true Shutakumi game, which is why he gave Shutakumi um, the creative reins. So if Hino wants to kill a cat, he has to get permission from Shu. So. <laughs> I'm not so sure beauty is achieved by sleeping, or that sleep is something you can try hard at. But I'm definitely ready to sleep. My remember Luke, Maya is the kind of person that will stand under a waterfall for training. Uh, Maya, did you just say something? Me? I didn't say anything. It sounded Italian, and I'm sure I heard something. Maybe it was from That's outside. A I see me the ball. I wonder what it is. Let's go and have a look, Luke. Yes, let's go straight into the night. Uh, At 4 a.m. or whatever time 4 it is. 4 a.m. Go to <laughs> sleep. Hey, isn't that Patty over there? Go to fucking sleep! 
You're a weed box nerd. It's, it's, it's like that character in Disney's Robin Hood, but he's like yelling, "Oh, it's 1 a.m. Everything's fine." <laughs> That sounds like someone having an existential dread, if I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> oh, goodness me, where could the cat have gone? Um, uh, honey, if a cat ran away, don't bother. Like, cats only show up when they want to. They'll, yeah, they'll come back whenever the fuck they want. And off at this time of night. She will be back tomorrow with probably a bat in their fangs. I suppose you're worried about the spell it too, aren't you? And it'll probably be alive. Yes. Isbella? Okay, that'll be a neat trick. Normally cats kill that stuff. It depends. Again, they try to communicate a message saying, See, we love you. This treat is for you. I wonder what I she's doing it. right now. <laughs> oh, hopefully not crying herself to sleep. Don't worry, Isbella. You've got friends here. We're going to make sure you come home to us safely. We're trying, we're trying to sleep. And when you huh. do, we'll all sit down and have a nice dinner together. And if the rest of you guys don't shut the fuck up, this roof is going through your fucking yeah, windows. Yeah, it's like, like at the beginning of Pyball Goes to West, the world, the, 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 his sister tries to sing and they like spray water on her. Yeah. They throw tomatoes through yeah. the window. I like how that scene implies that the humans can understand that it's a mouse singing and they just Yeah, I thought it was humans singing. doing that because it seems like that. It apparently oh, had it. No way, no way, Patty. Uh, Eve will come back, uh, bringing on, bringing with her a robot full of existential crisis uh, moments and memories. So, <laughs> Android Yamada, what is he doing here, to Pedro? Maya, I've got uh, a great idea. Reference. Oh boy. Let's go and find Eve for her. Uh, Luke. How I'm hard can sure it that... be to find a cat in this giant town? Reminder, but Luke is the same character who around way earlier, you know, hey. I forgot which specific game was literally falling on the street for how sleep the prime he was. <laughs> okay, He's okay, a brave okay, boy. Okay, 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 okay. To be fair, Luke, remember, Luke has the ability to communicate with Eve, meaning he actually does have a legitimately decent chance of being able to call out to Eve. Oh no, I actually understand. It was more like, again, the previous games made a point that Luke is still a poor child that cannot really, you know, get over an entire night without sleeping, but in here it's just fine. Yeah. I know it, it, it's completely nitpicky, so we completely ignore this, but uh, the game doesn't even lampshade this. Well, it depends. I will argue in the original trilogy when he's older, he's... I mean, that's mostly in the prequel trilogy that we see that kind of stuff. Um, that's the thing, I, I completely forgot that what, where specifically I see what if it was either in the first game or in uh, Lost Factor. You, you, you can take a look at his clothes, too, because if you take, if you, if you no, take no, a look no, at his I, outfit, his outfit from the original trilogy is different from his outfit in the prequel No, no, trilogy. no, I know that, but I forgot to where specifically that scene takes place, and obviously I forgot what clothes to look where at the time. Okay, so anyway, right. for, yeah. for the crossover's sake, now we are going to have the assistants work with each other. Yeah. This is also important because it's good. It's nothing. I mean, I am the I'm professor's sorry. apprentice. Could you repeat that to you? Um, this is important because, you know, they will need to have the involved characters having to build chemistry when it comes to, you know, it will be good, put to good use in the coming chapters. Yep. Let's get this on. This is actually one of the... E okay. No, no, it's it's gone now. This is actually one of the easiest things for Takumi to pull off of these two because Maya is incredibly eager to make friends all the time and Luke is an incredibly friendly kid who is very easy to get along with so this is an incredibly easy uh, thing for Takumi to pull off anyway. So. And one thing, kinda, sorry, go on. one thing I do like is like, well the game does more or less make sure to get all of the combinations of the characters you would like to see. You get the bout with Phoenix and Leighton during the trial time. We're now getting the bout with Luke and Maya and let's just say we'll get another interesting intersection in a few coming chapters. It kind of reminds me that uh, that short bit uh, that DC had a while ago. Uh, DC Comics about the double date that Superman and Lois and Batman and Catwoman are basically having. So we get this kind of elongated sequence where both care all four characters are arriving at a meeting point, and all the while Supes and Bats are basically complimenting each other, ironically enough. But when they meet, there's this stunning silence, nobody say anything, and it's Lois and Selina who have to literally break it, break it up and say, oh, nice to meet you. <laughs> that was cute. 
<laughs> All right then. So tune in for the next part where Luke and Maya go on a little tour of the town at night. Because I guess we can just throw the concept of sleep out the window at this point to go and yep. find Eve, the cat. Drag from the rise of my caffeine. See ya. See ya. See ya. See ya. See ya.